I think I figured it out and I'm feeling kind of foolish for the fact that I just overlooked this one thing. I'm going to tell you about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And today I'm making this video for you um, to tell you that I'm a bonehead. And I may have alluded to that on my last video, but I wasn't quite sure. Now I'm 100% positive that I'm a bonehead. And I'll tell you why right now. I'm a bonehead because I've been doing everything, reading your comments, um, trying to research as to you know promoted listings. I have a great video where I did 100% promoted listings just to see what would happen and tried everything, right? Tried raising my promoted listings, um, raising uh, or lowering the price, um, being more aggressive with my um, offers to watchers and nothing worked. In fact, Two Saturdays ago, so almost two weeks ago, I had a $16 day, okay? And that hasn't happened to me like in, like, who I don't even know, forever, okay? Maybe back when my store wasn't getting any, any views or anything like that for three days that eBay had to go in and fix. But this wasn't an eBay problem. This wasn't anything that was caused by eBay. Now we know it's summer slowdown, and a lot of you guys are still trying to figure out like I was trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Why am I not getting any sales? And like I was telling you guys in previous videos, we can only control the things that are within our control. We can't control all the glitches that you're seeing lately on eBay. We can't control the lighter traffic than usual on eBay due to the summer slowdown and the fact that people are having financial problems, uh, bad inflation, and people are, are less inclined to spend money freely as they would if that wasn't the case. So those are things that are outside of our control. We have no control over that. So I'm trying to find, and I've been doing this for the last few weeks, racking my brain trying to figure out what can I do to get sales normalized. Now when I say normalized, my goal you guys have known has always been let's get an account to where you're at $500 a day in sales. Okay, now I'm talking about my main account, not my little fun collectibles account. Just dealing with my account, I have uh, over 700 items on this account and I sell everything. I sell pretty much everything. Anything that has value, I'm willing to put on this account, okay? And an everything account, from my um, research over the past, on the average, you'll sell about one item per every 100 listed, provided that you're not selling just total crap because that's the main part of the equation is the quality of the item you're selling. If you're selling just crap, you can put thousands of crap items up on your account and that one per every hundred just goes out the window. So I'm talking about your, your basic general everyday type of items, random assortment of health and beauty, electronics, home goods, appliances, some clothing, some toys, uh, you name it. The kind of item you'd find in a uh, Amazon mystery pallet box, if you guys are familiar with that type of item. So for me, you know, selling $16 on a Saturday is absolutely horrible. And it gets me even more motivated to figure this thing out, which is why I came out and did the 100% promoted video, because I'm going to start trying to figure it out and I'm going to go, I'm not going to nickel and dime my promoted listings up until I find that sweet spot. I want to see what does the extreme do? So if you're interested in that, like I said, I post the video up here. You guys can check that out later. But as for this video, I omitted one thing that I wasn't doing. I was already doing promoted rates. I decided to do the suggested promoted rates, not just the 2% that eBay wants you to do, but I even went as far as doing what they ask to do. Um, on items that were older than 30 days, I even bumped those up by a couple percentage points. So now we're talking about giving eBay like over 20% on some of my items, which is fine because look, we don't want to give eBay anything. I get it. But if you consider like Mercari, I think they're at like 20%. I think that Poshmark is like at 
A lot of these sites are just boom, 20%. So giving eBay 20% is pretty much the standard. Um, maybe that turns a lot of you guys off, but you know what? I'd rather give up a few more percentage points to eBay and sell the item than to have it on my shelf over here and just sitting here collecting dust. So, you know, that whole thing of stepping over a dollar to pick up a quarter, it definitely, definitely applies here. It may be about principle to some of you, but principle doesn't pay the bills. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where if your item is good enough, it's going to sell itself without you having to jack up your promoted listing rates. But sometimes these items need help. They're just not good enough. You have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, these items aren't as good as I think they are. And uh, yeah, I'd like to hype up my items. I like to think, I think most sellers think that their items are better than what they actually are. But I got news for you. And this is something that I have to pinch myself and uh, convince myself of quite often is these items I'm getting, they might be okay, they, they might be in great condition, they might be brand new, but they may not be as in demand as you think. So I digress with all that, right? That's all little bits and pieces of why we're not making sales, but for me, what was holding me back from making sales? What's different now than, let's say, last week? And I think I've told you guys this before. I'm hoping that someone's paid attention to some of my videos. What happens when I run a markdown sale and after the markdown sale ends, historically for me, with the type of item I sell, it gets slow. And I run a markdown sale from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. And I ran one just the same way in June. Sales weren't great, they weren't bad, but they weren't great. But I wasn't really promoting my listings either all that much beyond the minimum. But what happened at, is at the end of June, I just totally spaced it. I totally, this is the first time this has ever happened beyond like a day or two, I totally forgot about markdown sales. So I'm here focusing on promoted listings, I'm uh, focusing on coupons, I created a 15% off coupon, doing everything I'm supposed to do, but pay attention. Didn't pay attention to my markdown sale. And it's something that I'm right now I'm in my phone. I have an alert fired up for the beginning of the of the month. Um, maybe one or two days in, I'm going to get a, a notice saying, "Hey, Bonehead, set your markdown sale for the new month." And that's what I did. I did that a few days ago. And wouldn't you know it? Within an hour of setting the markdown sale, I've had I got a couple sales. And I thought, okay, could be an anomaly, no big deal. Next day I had $380 in sales. Then the next day about $275 in sales. And that's good for the summer for me, okay? Q4 is always better than the summer. If I can make 300 a day, and now we're talking sales. If I'm running about a 50 to 60% margin, it'll tell you guys where I'm kind of at. But that's fine with me, okay? It's the summertime. You gotta brace for bad sales in the summer. As a reseller in this business, the summer is always going to be slower than Q4 or Q1, okay? And you have to maybe save up throughout the year, maybe figure that you're not gonna have as much money in June, July, August, and you have to maybe budget accordingly, and or work harder, get more items or more value in your store to where it's a numbers game and it's offset by that. We've talked about that before. But guys, I'm telling you, it's not just the markdown sale. I'm not telling you guys to do, do a markdown sale and everything's gonna get fixed. That's not what I'm saying. For me, the last five days have been outstanding. I've, I've made about an average of about eight to 10 sales a day. And on my main account, it's been great. And it's because I didn't have all the components in place. But what I've actually learned is you can do a whole lot of things right with your store and it's still not going to be enough. You have to figure out for the type of item you're selling, you need to optimize your store and your listings for the type of item you're selling. 
So if you're selling a one-off item, don't promote anything. Don't use promoted listings. It would make no sense. Um, in fact, maybe a markdown sale doesn't make any sense. Maybe if you're selling one-off items where you have a certain niche, maybe you need to make a dedicated private coupon for repeat customers to come back to your store. That's a strategy that I would employ if you are dealing with a niche uh, store. For those of you who sell everything like me, a private coupon won't work, okay? Private coupon is going to uh, give you no results. Someone asked me about that. And if you sell everything, I had exactly zero sales in a nine month period where I was actually putting a thank you sticker on there with a private coupon code for them to come back. They never came back because um, they're not looking for my store. They're looking for an item, okay? Now, if you're a specialty store, they're looking for your store because you carry those items and you provided good service. So it's a combination. Figure out what kind of store you have. Figure out what kind of customer you have. This is so important. I know it's so easy. Let's list, um, let's go buy, let's list, let's ship and think that everything else is gonna take care of itself, but not anymore, okay? You have to be a little bit more involved in your store. Figure out who your customers are. Figure out who your competition is. Find out what they're doing. How are they making sales? But for me, it's simple. Competitive promoted listing rates, markdown sale, okay? Um, in this case, 10 to 15% public eBay coupon where the coupon shows up in your listing. Um, good prices, good photos, 12 photos. Here's, a, here's probably one of the top things that I've been changing lately. And I think this is making a difference as well. Optimizing my title. And I'm gonna do a video probably here in the next day or two about that because it's working for me. And I wanna help you guys. Of course, it's gonna hurt my sales, I don't care. I ain't here for me, I'm here for you. And I just want you guys to know, I fixed my situation. Now, knock on plastic or whatever the heck's in front of me right now. Hopefully this video doesn't jinx that but I'm feeling pretty confident after the last five days that I'm back on track at least for what I have expected for summer sales. And if I let this momentum carry over, provided the economy cooperates, I'm looking forward to a good or a better Q4 than maybe I had anticipated only a week or two ago. So watch your comments down below. Comment, let me know what you think about what I had to say. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe I missed something here. Um, while you're at it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified the next time I go live, which I'll probably do on Monday, or when I make another video. So I had a chance to hang out with Biscuit Butt and Carrie from American Arbitrage. Um, cool guy, he's out in the Vegas area. Um, certainly love, love, love the idea of networking with Vegas sellers in my area. I think if you're in Vegas or if you're in another city and you have an opportunity to meet resellers just to, you know what, hey, um, reach out to them, uh, bounce ideas off of them. Maybe you have product that you don't want to deal with that they'd love to have or vice versa. Get off the island that you're on and reach out and meet new people. So. Went to lunch with these guys uh, yesterday or the other day, and we had about a, we sat there for a couple hours just going over, talking different stuff, having a good time, and then we shot over to Savers. You know me, I'm not a thrifter, not even a yard seller, which I'm going to be doing this weekend, but it was fun, and I picked up some stuff, and I even made a sale. Um, but yeah, uh, meeting people will help you. It'll make it easier for you to open up what you're doing right now. So, you know, for me, I tend to get set in my ways. I tend to say, this is what works and I'm not interested in anything else. And that's kind of a bad mindset. You know, you need to open yourself up to other ideas, other avenues to source, other ideas, so that if you're, we talked about this before, if your current sourcing method goes awry and something happens to where you can't source that way, no problem. I've got this way, I've got that way, and it ain't gonna hold me back and maybe that's something that you need to consider. But I had a good time going yard selling for the first time in a long, 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 long time. 
this weekend and I'll be telling you about that later so I'm excited so yeah the bonehead here I make mistakes all the time I'm not afraid to share them with you because I want you to learn from it as well as how I'm learning from it and you know I will be hopefully successful uh, at yard selling I'm gonna have my own yard sale on the 14th of August you guys know I'm moving I have an empty garage I'm gonna leave everything here that I don't want to take with me and I'm gonna basically just sell it and uh, if you're in the Vegas area hit me up flipping ain't easy 2020 at gmail.com and I'll give you more details in the yard sale so you can come by so guys there's so many intangibles to making sure your listings are complete in eBay's eyes. They may be complete in our eyes, but there may be one or more things missing from your listing being on page one or page three. And it's just yet another example of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have an excellent weekend and we will talk to you very, very soon.